This is a gastroscopy in a 55-year-old patient who presented with clinical signs of gastroesophageal reflux disease. After insertion of the endoscope into the stomach, we start a slow withdrawal. The ends of the gastric folds represent the gastroesophageal junction. During retraction, you can see the typical reddish appearance of a Barrett's esophagus. Some squamous epithelium spots are visible within the Barrett segment at the 3 o'clock position. Now you can see the whole dimension of the Barrett's esophagus. In the distal area, the esophagus wall is covered by metaplastic epithelium. We start measuring the extent of the Barrett's segment according to the validated Prague classification system. First, we measure the distance between the end of the gastric folds to the proximal end of the circumferential capped area. According to the Prague classification, this distance in centimetres constitutes the C value that denotes the maximal length. Islands of squamous epithelium are not considered in the classification system. Now we repeat the measurement from the gastric fold to the proximal end of the Barrett's epithelium. It measures 2 cm. According to the Prague classification, this distance in centimeters constitutes the M value that denotes the maximal length of the Barrett segment. All in all, this Barrett segment is classified as a C1-M2 Barrett's esophagus. This is a second case of a patient with known Barrett's esophagus. The esophageal wall is widely capped with the metaplastic mucosa. Obviously, this is a long segment Barrett's esophagus as it exceeds 3 cm in length. At the distal esophageal end, we are passing a large hiatal hernia, which is clearly visible in inversion. The large hiatal hernia and the esophageal movement can make it difficult to locate the gastroesophageal junction. Do not confuse the diaphragmatic hiatal impression with the gastroesophageal junction. Start the measurement at the top of the gastric mucosal folds. The gastric folds have to be evaluated in a deflated situation. Retract the endoscope to the most proximal point where the whole esophageal wall is circumferentially covered by Barrett's metaplasia. Classify this as the C value of Barrett's esophagus in centimeters. Repeat the measurement for the most proximal metaplastic tongue and report it as M value.
In this case, we can define a C5M6 Barrett's esophagus. In the next step, you should inspect the mucosa for potential dysplasia. Start with white light before using virtual chromoendoscopy. In the last step, you can use acetic acid to highlight the mucosal structure. Usually, there is no need for a spraying catheter. Just position the scope at the proximal end of the Barrett segment and flush the esophagus with 1% acetic acid through the working channel after aspirating the air. In case of mucosa irregularities, targeted biopsy samples should be performed. If no irregularities are identified, four-quadrant biopsies, according to the Seattle Protocol, is recommended every one to two centimeters along the Barrett segment.